Hi, Insta. And hello over on Facebook. How's everybody doing? Say hello. Let me see who's on live today. As you can see, I'm not in my typical um, office. So we're away from home right now, which brought its own challenges uh, this morning as I was setting up for this. Hey, Vera. Uh, I had one of those mornings, you guys, where, you know, when you proclaim this is this is what's going to happen and you're really organized and and it just seems like left and right, there are things that come up. And so I, you know, I spent my morning in morning Facebook. Hi, Natalie. I spent my morning just in quiet, how I normally do. One of my my personal um, commitments is to, you know, create before I do anything else and to just really put into my mindset um, what I need to do to have the best day ever. And so I was doing that this morning and prepping for the broadcast this morning, go out for a run. And uh, I typically do that around, you know, 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11 o'clock most days. And I go out for a run and it was literally the only 10 minutes of the day that it started with pouring rain. The clouds opened up, like check out the dew. You guys, it's the beauty of live. Here it is. Look at, look at my hair. It's just like, I look like a wet rat, but we're going to just roll through this. So, you know what you do is, um, oh, and the other thing I was going to share, I set up to record, right? And the, the, the condo right next door decided to start doing major construction today. So fingers crossed, I'm mic'd up, Insta, not mic'd up for you. So if you start to hear banging, hey, we'll just keep rolling through it. Because I have a really, uh, I'm really excited to share the topic today because I know it's going to um, serve in, in, a, in a raw and real way. Um, it's been a special couple of weeks and I, I want to just speak from a place of awareness and what's come to me with clarity that I know I need to share today on the topic of rising up. Okay. Um, but before you do, I want to invite, before I get into it, I want to invite you guys to put on whatever oils help connect you to the vision you have of yourself, the, 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 the human being, the mother, the leader that you are growing into. And my oils of choice today are Whisper Blend and Tangerine. So I just did a little body oil before I hop down here to get cozy with you guys for the next 30, 40 minutes. Um, I've been getting a lot of notes this week, like super kind messages from you guys. Um, I celebrated the the first day of my 38th birthday um, just about two weeks ago. And uh, I've just been doing a lot of reflect, reflecting. And um, this past week, myself and my team became the first double diamond team in Canada um, in the land of doTERRA, which was a huge milestone, um, very exciting. And um, I believe there, there's about seven in the world right now who have uh, have grown with their teams to that level. So I have a lot on my mind. And, and with your messages that have come in, there, there's been a lot of that just shared excitement and congratulations. And um, I've gotten back to as many as I, as I could. But with a lot of them, there was that, that second message of, hey, I just don't know how you do it. Or, you know, what could you share with me one thing to help me in my own business, in my own life to to go to that next level? I've received a lot of those kinds of messages. And so when I was thinking about the broadcast today, I thought, you know, I want to um, I want to become clear on what I need to share about what I believe has led to this. And um, I mean, some a lot of what I'm going to share today has been has been addressed in previous broadcasts before because again it's it's what I know to be true it's it's the level of ownership and level of leadership that I take in my own life um, that I see really working uh, for myself within my team with my leaders uh, to achieve that that level okay that that type of growth so so yeah I recommend you do this anytime you have yourself, you've gone for something um, that maybe at one point in your life felt impossible. Uh, you've achieved something, you've really put your vision and your your focus to work. 
and you've achieved something great, what I recommend you always do is get yourself offline and enter a space of stillness and awareness so that you can really be clear on what's just happened, um, to be really present in that moment, to be in that new rhythm and to really feel the gratitude. And, and I've, I've been doing that for the last two weeks. I've been pretty much offline. Um, me and my favorite people, we hopped on a plane and came to our favorite place and, and just decided to just like really be together and soak it up in gratitude. And I've spent a lot of time in solitude, just just really reflecting. And so uh, I want to share with you today, there's five things that came into my awareness when I, <laughs> Tara is joining from her bathtub right on. Uh, there's, there's five things that came into my awareness as I, as I sat with this stillness. And I, I, I want to, I want to share this with you guys. And I want to have a conversation around what you think of these things that I share and how they may have a, have been working for you in your life. And please ask questions as we go. I love this to be a two-way conversation for sure. Um, but I wanna, I wanna dive right in, okay? I wanna, I wanna go deep with you guys um, right away. I started earning six figures a month at the age of 35. And I say that without any attachment to how that lands for you because it's not about the money, okay? But what I have learned fast track in the last couple of years, Tracy, what I've learned fast track in the last couple of years is that there is a very intimate relationship between ownership of your life and the abundance and circulation you will create from that place. So my personal greatest fear and I work on this every day, is to live a lukewarm life, okay? Um, the idea of that, the idea of not living a meaningful life with joy and with purpose, my purpose, um, I would rather die than, than not live a life that is authentic to me and not to compare myself to other people, but to really, to do me, to do me and to work on me um, so that I can be and give my best every day to the people that matter most to me. That means everything to me. And I, I, I want to begin this by stating what a privilege. Uh, I have so much gratitude for the opportunity today in our world to be a mother and to be a leader. At the same time, that has blessed my life greatly to, to be both of those things uh, at the same time. But both of those things have been blessed because of the solid relationship of love and care and of trust that I have with myself. And I, I hope if nothing else, when you join me on these weekly talks, when we have time together in person at events, I hope that you truly understand and can feel from me that it has to start with that, a boldness about loving and, and living from a place of alignment and authenticity and not worrying about that's how, how that's going to land for other people. And I've shared this in the past. When you own that, when you, when you are an experience for people, when they are with you and they can feel that you show up in your life 100% you, that you don't compare yourself to other people, that you know there is no game plan or rule book for what you're creating right now because it's never been done before. When you do that and you show up in your life and you lead your business from that place, it is a feeling you give people and it is so inspiring because you it's very uninspiring to meet somebody who might have all of the status and success in the world, but you know they're unhappy or you know that they have built their their success by taking other people down or um, trying to copycat what other people have done. When you, and I'm gonna share this in one of the five things, but when you are living your life authentically in your truth, there is actually no comparison. There is, because there is not another you, right? So why in the world would you ever look at what someone else is doing and think, well, they did it that way or they they're teaching me what's possible. I mean, if anything, what I want my life to be a masterpiece of is that everything is possible. 
I mean, hitting a rank like double diamond in doTERRA, I remember four and a half years ago when I thought the rank of elite was like, how in the world would, you know, that happen? But we have to keep expanding our awareness of what is possible. I wonder what else is possible when dot, dot, dot. I wonder what else is possible when I show up every day and commit to being my best. So bold alignment and living our truth is the foundation for great success. And, and, and the five things I'm going to share with you today are, you know, when I do deep personal reflection, when I'm still, when I'm not looking around and, and getting caught up and being busy, this is what I know has worked and is going to continue to work in, in just seeing what else is possible and having that state of wonder when we, when it comes to creation. And I mean, everything you guys can dream up for your life is, is real because you wouldn't actually even have that dream if, if you didn't think you could do it, I mean, it's possible, like there's that game plan there, but you also might not think it would happen if someone else hadn't shown you it's possible. And what I, what I get really excited about is I love what achieving the rank of double diamond as a team actually installs in the leaders in doTERRA and specifically even in my own team where they may have one point thought, oh, I'll never be a diamond leader. Or I could never be a presidential diamond leader. But now all of a sudden, double diamond. Oh, OK, maybe I can. Maybe I can do. Diamond. Maybe I can become a diamond leader. What would that look like for me? You know, as we continue to expand and grow as leaders. We we teach others that the dreams that they have in their heart are very doable, very possible because of what we're modeling. I mean, the team, the team and the people you start to attract to you to your work, especially if you are somebody who has the opportunity to lead a team. When you lead yourself, first and foremost, with this type of integrity, you will attract to yourself, to your work, individuals, leaders, friends, partners that share that same respect of the work. Okay. And when you get the right people together, you guys, there is nothing you can't accomplish. And, and this is what I have personally experienced. I mean, I'm obsessed, like obsessively excited about women that show up take great responsibility for their alignment, their health, um, their contribution to the world through how they lead. I'm grateful to know them and I'm so grateful to work with them alongside of them. I mean, we created this together. I'm obsessed with the leaders I see even within my own organization, but um, in the world today, I'm obsessed with these women that are not making apologies for who they are. They're showing up bright. They're not dimming down because it makes someone else uncomfortable. I mean, those same people that we fear we're gonna impress in the wrong way, guess what? They are desperate for you to show up bright in their life. Their initial response to you doing that though is to attack because you've, you've stirred something in their heart. <clears throat> so let's go into this. I'm gonna share five things. I'm just looking through your comments. We have about 130 on live on Facebook. Got about a little over 50 over on Instagram. See you guys sharing. I see all your comments and I really appreciate them. So let's uh, let's keep this going to a conversation as I get in. So number one, number one in the role of creating everything you dream of in your life is the belief in yourself and following your own alignment and your own excitement. Okay, so the, they, they all kind of, go together because when you understand that what excites you in life is what you're meant to do and when you are clear on what fills you up what creates excitement for you what creates ease what creates joy that is alignment defined that is your perfect alignment and when you understand that and you have a belief that um you are here you are here to do the work like this is this opportunity that you have right now, whatever that is, whether it's a doTERRA business or something else, this opportunity didn't come to you accidentally. It came to you because you're, you're meant to be one of the ones that do the work that carry it out. And so um, th there's a quote, I wrote it down in my notes somewhere. Um, oh yeah. You guys have probably heard this, but pay attention to the things that you are naturally drawn to. They are often connected to your path, to your passion and to your purpose in life have the courage to follow them. That's a quote by Ruben Chavez or Chave. It takes courage to do the work that you are excited to do and to not just 
you know, live your life in this box that someone told you was supposed to be life or was supposed to be work. So you have to believe that you're here to do the work. And I mean, here's the deal. The belief in yourself is actually, it has to be step one. It has to be the most important thing because, um, you know, top producers in anything, anybody you guys look at and you, you, you see success through how they live. The only reason they're a top producer is because they see themselves as a top producer and, and performing at this high level. They have an image, a self image. Okay. They have an image of themselves that they are a top performer, that, that when they do something, they do it with excellence. So they have a winner, like a winning consciousness. Okay. About them. And this is what is determining their results every single time because they, whenever they decide to do something, they go into this with this, this image of themselves performing at a high level with whatever they have said yes to. So your, you know, your ability to be successful has to begin with this type of mindset that yes, I, I will be successful at this. I will apply excellence to this. And I believe in myself. I'm be I believe I can do this because you all can do anything when you, when you come from this winning consciousness. You know, let's say um, you, you may have heard this before when it relates to money. Um, I can't remember who, who shared this, whether it was Jim Rohn or if it was in, um, oh man, I wish I had the source of this, but you guys may have heard this before. <clears throat> um, if you took all of the money in the world and you divided it up equally amongst every single human being, in a very short time, the wealthy would be wealthy again and the poor would be poor again. It would not take long for everything to settle back to what it was before you took all the money and equally dispersed it. Because a lot of people think, if only I could have more money, if only I could have success, if only I could hit that next rank or be famous, then everything would be easier for me. Everything, all my problems would go away. I mean, a lot of people think that about money, right? This is absolutely not true. And the main reason, you know, if you take money or a rank, a rank, I mean, how many of you have your eyes set on a certain goal in your business, like a rank in doTERRA, and you think if only I could get to that rank, everything would change. But you are not prepared for that rank or that level of wealth if you have not um, determined that you are ready for that, if you have not prepared for that mentally. I have leaders in my own business who have hit ranks and have dropped back two or three ranks and have never grown past that again because they weren't ready for that rank. Now, I also know of leaders who today might be at a certain rank level, but the way that they carry themselves, the mindset, the way that they show up to their work every day is that of a diamond leader. Yes, act as if they and because they do that, they are literally calling that success into their life. Yes, Tracy said, have you read The Big Leap? It is a fantastic book on this topic. And I'm actually going to give you an action for each of these five things to do. But The Big Leap would be one to read on this topic. So the big aha moment within this is if you understand that, number one, what excites you is your work. I shared this on stage last year. What excites you is your next move, okay? Nothing else. Do not chase things that feel heavy. Do not chase that next rank if it feels heavy to you because you know you actually don't believe you're there or you're, that you're meant to be there yet. That's why there's personal, there's personal growth, uh, you know, in any business, as good as any business gets, you know, as great as doTERRA is, it's the most incredible business model I have ever been a part of. That's why I love it. I can't, I mean, I want to, I want to do this work for the rest of my life because it impacts people's lives in such a real way. But as good as it is, I mean, I don't think it gets better than doTERRA because you're unlimited in what you can accomplish and what you can earn. Um, there is nowhere you can't go here. Okay. But if you don't have it correct right here, if you don't understand that you are here to do this work and that you absolutely can do everything you dream of, you've got to get it right here first. If you have a belief that you don't deserve it, it's not going to happen. And you might, you might have an upline who, who works with you and, and helps you get to that next rank or maybe needs you at a certain rank, but it will always 
drop set back to your level of belief in yourself. Okay, and remember, when we think about competing or comparing, there is no such thing when you understand you, the power of your dreams, the power of your story, your experience in life, it makes you very unique to build this business. So action from this, step number one, I want you to start asking yourself this question whenever you go into anything you're doing that's considered work. If this was even easier or in more alignment, what would that look like? Question mark. If this was easier, what would that look like? Because your soul is always guiding you towards what is your truth, your authentic way of doing things, you know? So if you think right now, like comment in the comments, what is something right now in your quote unquote work that feels really hard? And then try that question, you know, if this was easy, what would that look like? And, and see what comes up for you, because you the, the answer is there. It's just having the courage to follow once you receive that answer and not keep doing all the things you think you're supposed to be doing that actually feel hard. And then let's give a book action, the big leap for this one. Write that in your notes if this is something you're struggling with. You guys hear my stomach growling through the mic? <laughs> okay. And comment, you know, what comes up for you as you think about this, the higher level of belief that's necessary as step number one. Step number two is owning your energy and your health. This gives you the ultimate advantage in life. I, I want to share something I saw Danielle Laporte write on her Instagram. I think it was yesterday. She wrote that your health is the new rebellion that your wellness is your activism. So think about why your ownership of your health and your energy actually puts you at an advantage today in a world where most people are sitting back waiting for someone else to take care of them or are polluting their health with, with things that are not serving their highest level. You cannot be legendary and, and excellent at what you do if you don't have your health, okay? There's a, there's a proverb I love that says, when you have your health, you have a thousand dreams. When you don't, you only have one. When you don't have your health, the only thing you're dreaming of is to have your health. And if you've ever known anybody who's had a chronic illness or has been very sick, you know that there is no room to have any other dreams than to have their health. And that has to be priority number one. Now, this is what I love in doTERRA. This is the model. The model is you heal and then you offer others the opportunity to heal. And guess what? The healing is a daily, is a daily commitment. It's a daily devotion to be your best, to, to take care of yourself, to be responsible for how you are showing up. It's up to no one else to take care of your health and your business success comes from that place. Now, here's what's interesting. I run various free health programs to my entire wellness com um, community. I'm not sure why, but I have about 55,000 people in my wellness community. And when I run these free programs, we might have about 30 active people. There are more people that request to do these programs than uh, from, on, from people that are not on my team and people that are on my team. And the number one reason for this is because there are people who are on my own team who, when they have access to everything, everything's been laid out for them to take more ownership of their health, there are still people that do not honor this second principle, that everything in their life is, is, is connected back to the energy and the health that they have in their body, that the you, I mean, you cannot have growth and energy in your business if you have no energy in your body. If you if you can't show up to do the work and, and to to do the work from a from a place of excitement and vibrancy. Uh, then that work, it, that growth is not going to come to you. It just won't. This is so important that we, we take care of this. OK, um, and I'm not going to expand too much more on this because. We all know areas within our own life where we are not 
taking ownership of our health. And the action within this category, I want you to sit with this, but what are the two to three things that you must have in place today? Start today. What needs to change? And keep it, keep it small so that you can do it. What needs to change in order for you to create higher health and vibrancy in your life? Check in on this area. Is that working out for 20 minutes a day? Um, you know, I'm running a 30-day cleanse program right now for our community. And yes, they're taking their cleanse and restore supplements, but I have weaved in a whole level of, have you considered this? Are you looking at this area of your health? You know, I want to expand their, their awareness of what health looks like and feels like in their body. Um, you will have your greatest level of success in your business when you commit to your personal health, especially for those of you that are in the wellness industry. One of the reasons that the, um, the modern healthcare industry is, is crumbling is because people are tired of looking up to and listening to people that are clearly not the example of health. For far too long, we have been paying too much attention to people whose actions and whose life do not model what they're teaching. So if you are somebody who is a leader in the wellness industry, you must, you must take prime care of your body. Your body is, is the vessel, is, is what you are creating from. And then we've talked about the mindset and the belief as step number one and step number two is take care of your home. Um, and don't, you know, you don't, you will have seasons where, I mean, like, let's say some of you have done diamond club and doTERRA you've had, you know what it feels like to be really busy in your business and your health may have taken a bit of a back seat. But the important thing, when we talk about ownership, the important thing here is that you change directions when you know it's time that, that you own that, that change. You don't let things go on for too long, um, that are you know, affecting other areas of your health at the expense of growth in your business, for example. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, uh, what, I, what I have noticed work, has worked very well for me and is working very well for my team is to be a student of life. Now, I follow a personal flow of I when I have, I follow my curiosity. I love when somebody asks me something I don't know, right? So um, I would actually, for those of you that are brand new in your work, let's say you're looking to teach your first oils class, get excited when somebody asks you something that you don't know. The goal is never to know all the things, okay, because you never will. But when somebody um, asks a question and you don't know the answer, be very excited about that because you're about to learn something you didn't know before and you'll it's going to be something that's going to add value to your life because you can apply it now. And then you can teach it. And that's that's the flow that I personally follow. I follow my excitement or my yeah, I follow my excitement, but I follow my curiosity. Um, I learn, I apply, and then I teach. And when you come from that place of knowing that we're always taking information in, we're always learning, um, you've got to be very protective of that. Very protective of that. You're you're always taking something in. And so one of the areas for you guys is to understand that what in your life right now. Are you allowing in that you shouldn't be? How can you protect that time better? Years ago, way back when I first started to become an entrepreneur, I decided to stop reading the news. I decided to stop um, reading a newspaper, watching the news, browsing on social media as another form of this like wasted input. And I transferred that time to filling my mindset with anything that was going to start creating and expanding in, in, in success and in belief in myself. So that could be podcasts or audiobooks. Today, I, I spend at least every single day, at least three hours a day, listening and conditioning my mind every single day. Sometimes it's broken up. Like sometimes I'll be folding some laundry or doing the dishes and I'll have my earbuds in when no one's in the house and I'm listening to a book that way. Um, when I go for a run, sometimes I'll listen to music, but usually I'm listening to a book, something that's going to, again, expand my, my mindset and my success potential. Okay. I love to learn and then I love to apply it. That's really important. You have to apply it. You have to execute what you're learning before you teach. People need to know that you are the teacher because of how you live your life. When you're learning, look at how you can apply it. Okay. That is the difference. 
Don't be somebody who's constantly inputting without taking action because then you'll never be the teacher or you'll be a false teacher. People will come to you thinking, oh, you, you know, you talk a good game on social media and then they experience you and they're like, oh, something's out of alignment there. Something's flat. We all know those people. It is so easy to present yourself today um, as an expert or as somebody who's got it all figured out, uh, you know, or doesn't have it all figured out. That seems to be the new trend on Instagram is like, I'm going to be really vulnerable with you guys and just air all my dirty laundry and make us all feel connected around our pain. That's a real common way people right now are trying to build fans. Um, but the thing is, you want to always be somebody learning. It's not that you've got it all together and you're perfect, but you're somebody committed to learning. It's not about always having it figured out. It's about learning, applying, and teaching. So challenge yourself to find the lesson every day, to, find, to look at your work as, as something meaningful, no matter what you're doing. Um, you know, and, and this is something that will always serve you if it doesn't matter what you're doing or what you consider to be your work, if you apply this level of excellence and wanting to do it in the best way because you're a student of it and to create a meaningful experience for people, success will continue to come for you. You know, being great at what I do and what I commit to doing is very important to me. I, I now today, I mean, I haven't always done this well. I used to say yes to a lot of things. So today, you know, when I say yes to something, uh, I'm only going to say yes to it if I know I can do it with excellence and if I'm genuinely excited about it, which means I say no to like 95% of the things, right? Um, and I'm going to talk about that in the next point. Give me a sec. I've got to get my charger. Hold tight. Should be back. What what comes up for you guys, you know, on this topic of being a student and knowing you don't have to have it all figured out? Is that freeing for you? Does that give you a sense of freedom? Because if you are starting something, if you're brand new to your business and you know it's not about you having it all figured out, does that help? Because, you, you're, you know, you're not ever going to get there, but being a student of it and committing to doing it in the best way. One of the best ways to build trust with people, by the way, if you if you're teaching a class on oils, you're just getting started and you're sharing your passion with people and somebody asks you a question you don't know. Be real with them and say, that is such a good question. And I, I haven't actually learned that yet, but I'm going to learn it. I'm going to get back to you. Perfect. If somebody said that to me and I'm a student in the class, be like, you're awesome. Thank you. You know, it's not about you being perfect. So be fueled by this intense purpose to, to learn whatever you're in, to learn the work and to apply it in your life and then to teach it. Let that fuel you and let the, your commitment to being great at what you do keep you going. If you're having a hard day or someone asks you think, something you don't know and you're starting to feel bad about yourself, remind yourself you will be a student for the rest of your life and a teacher next, okay? It is all. It is a gift to, to be to be here and to have the opportunity to keep learning, right? It's great to be a beginner. I know the connection's not the hottest here. I think I, I just lost Instagram, and I look pretty choppy on Facebook. But the podcast will will upload perfectly. We'll be just fine. Okay, so your action within this category. Your action within this category, number number three of being a student of life, is to look at your calendar right now. What needs to come off your calendar that is not feeding your success mindset? Because now you're with step number four, you're going to fill it with what needs to be on there. Okay, thanks, Isabella. Yeah, poor Wi-Fi over here. Video is a little choppy. We'll keep rolling. The podcast will upload tomorrow. We'll be all good. So number four, consistency and focus is your trump card. You guys, if you can master your focus, 
Um, time management is kind of, uh, you know, one of those things we're talking about less and less, kind of like the word balance, like there is really no such thing. You can't manage time, but you can manage your focus and what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to. Now, when you when you become really skilled at committing to what feels exciting and is an alignment for you, your focus will be intensified, okay? And this is gonna predict the type of success or, or mastery that you have. Because it's not what you guys are doing once in a while, okay? Um, if you're a once in a while kind of person with anything, uh, you're not successful with anything. So deciding what you're going to focus on, what, what deciding what keeps you in alignment, and deciding the level of excellence you want to bring to what you're focusing on is what is going to set you apart. So you want to be prepared for what is coming your way by what you're saying yes or no to right now. Take a look at your schedule right now. So if you're following the action I just gave you, take a look at your schedule and it will tell you what your priorities are. Your schedule will tell you what you care most about in your life. And if you don't keep a schedule, then your belief of life is that things just happen to you. People who have a schedule are expecting more from life. Now things don't always go according to that schedule, but don't let that fear run you. Where can you take more ownership with your time and your focus? Because it's very easy to be busy at the wrong things. There's a, I know a lot of busy people they're accomplishing nothing. And people look at my life and my success and they think, oh, I would never want that. She must be so busy. Not at all. Everything I commit to doing today, I, in fact, with every uh, growth rank, my life has become more joyful and in, in more alignment. It's become easier in that sense because I've under, I understand these five principles I'm sharing with you. And I'm, I'm so happy you're here. This is going to change your life. If you if you really get this and move in this direction boldly, OK. Focus today, you guys, it, it, this is the toughest thing. We it is really tough to be somebody who stays focused. Um, every once in a while, I'm on a call with people who are like super unfocused. Um, and I uh, the, the very and I, it's interesting. Again, I'm a student of it. I'm like, this is interesting because I, I, I get it. I get how much this principle matters. So when it comes to my own life and my own time, which I'm in control of, um, I look at where I need to have even more focus with my alignment and to get my agenda straight. I, I stopped being a fan of executing other people's agendas years ago. Now, what's the most common way this shows up? Who knows where I'm going here? When I say most people are really good at executing someone else's agenda, what does that look like? How does that show up in everyday life? Think about that for a moment. Where in your life are you actually getting through someone else's to-do list, even though you're a business owner, even though you, you, know, you have the opportunity to create everything you want in your life and, and your own agenda, what, are, what is one way? Somebody share. Julie said working for someone else, okay. Let's say though you're your own boss. So a couple of you are saying working for someone else. Yes, this is that's a, that is a good one, but that is the obvious reason somebody becomes their own, they own their own business. They don't wanna work for somebody anymore. But how is this still showing up for some of you who are your own boss? Danielle said, Meetings to walk them through things. Yeah, meetings are a pretty big waste of time. There's a lot of calls you might be having with people that are actually a waste of time. Reacting, yes. Okay. Um, maybe I'm not being clear enough. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to go in the direction I'm headed. Oh, no, Isabella got it. Waking up and checking your messages first thing. Prime. Bingo. Lauren said, texting people back right away. Love it. Perfect. Doing all the legwork for somebody else. Doing too much for other people, said Wendy. So overgiving and enabling. That's a low vibe place to be. And everybody gets there. This is one of the things that bubbles up at every rank in doTERRA. You 
suddenly realize where you're giving too much or doing too much for people or over promising and you have to keep coming back to a place of owning you know your time should always be 80 percent in your own business i know a lot of high level leaders blue diamonds presidential diamonds who really feel heavy about this where they feel like they're here to do all the things and they have to they have to um mentor everybody on their team to help them bust through their blocks. I stopped doing that years ago because you know what? You know what I realized? If through the very um, example and setting of ownership in my own life and t and showing what's possible through how I show up and serve people and, and I mean, I just want to help people at the core. That is what I want to do. I just want to help people. But that does not mean I'm going to do the work for them. So when I connect somebody to the best opportunity to live an amazing life through using essential oils and self-directed healthcare and the opportunity to own their own business if they want that. When I connect people to that, I've already given them the greatest gift. And I, there is no part of me anymore that feels like I, I need to do anything else for them. When I feel led or compelled, I do. But everyone, you know, and every once in a while, somebody will, We'll see if they can kind of like see what they can get, see what they can take. I, I have those people just like you, you know, on my own team. Um, I like to have a little fun with them before I and I rattle the cage a little bit to help them understand what's actually happening here. But when somebody comes at you and makes you feel like you're you should be doing all these things for them or that your your job description is is to do all this for them and do their agenda. No, 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 no. That is not what this work is. But again, this requires boldness. It requires courage for you to follow through on what you know is true because chances are nobody did that for you. And so, uh, again, coming back to what Danielle Laporte shared about, well, your, your health is the new rebellion. Your ownership of your results, your commitment to show up in the world as a light and help people and connect people to the opportunity to do the same when you do that, that is your personal, that is your rebellion against the world that's looking to take because they can't take that. And when somebody comes to you saying, you know, uh, I need you to do this for me, they're never going to grow anyway because they don't get this principle. So let them go. Um, and sometimes people will come to you and say, uh, I think this could be better done a better way. I think you should do this. I think you should do that. So the should word is a super low vibe word. Get rid of it from your vocab. But you'll notice people use that word that are looking to take, right? So when when somebody, uh, like let's say that's your greatest fear, is somebody saying that to you. Uh, get excited when someone says that to you because now you just you have an opportunity to to clarify, but to also encourage them and just say to them, hey, I am so excited to see what you create here. I think you should do all those things that you think I should do. Uh, I'm so excited to see what you create. Leave it at that. Let them own what the, the way that they think things should be. Great. Uh, that's not on you. You keep doing you. You stay in alignment with what you know to be true. And you commit to work, working hard on your vision every day. This is not about putting your feet up. And I, I, have, I teach that to my team through my example that I still enroll, you know, eight to 10 people a month, that I, I care about people. I want people to have this opportunity to live their best life. That's why I keep showing up. But most importantly, I, I lead myself first. That's what I want duplicating. Sorry, I just had a call come in, see if Insta comes back up. So get your agenda straight. This is a daily devotion, you know, that you you commit to to your focus at what you say you're going to do, that you do. This builds trust with yourself. I've talked about this before. The ultimate relationship when you're a business owner is your relationship with yourself and knowing that you can count on you, that you do the things you say you're going to do. So focus, focus is not about having, you know, 100 things on your plate and multitasking and doing them all really well. Um, I might have lost Instagram, but that's okay. We'll keep rolling. Focus is about saying no to the hundreds of things that seem like a good idea to say yes to the one thing you know you need to do with excellence. 
There's an acronym. I think it came out of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that book. Focus defined as follow one course until successful. How many of you have too many things you've said yes to right now? And it's a it's a way for you to actually not succeed. Like you're sabotaging yourself through saying yes to too many people and too many things. You're if you if you really sit with that, you're doing that because you're scared to succeed. You know you could succeed if you did the one thing. So a book I want to recommend within this one is The Slight Edge. It is all about this, having intense focus, daily increments towards success. This is what I do. Everything I touch in a day. Okay, cool, Joss. Uh, Facebook Live is, was working well if you guys want to hop over there. Um, everything I do, whether it's how I respond to an email or um, if I'm updating a Google Doc or a program or something, I'm looking to how can I infuse this with joy and play and excellence? How can I make it even better than it was yesterday? That That is the goal. So the fifth thing, the last thing I want to share with you as I've reflected on the journey here and on the, the topic of rising up, the fifth thing is to understand that boundaries Boundaries are the highest form of self-care. And here's why. So protecting your purpose and learning how to show up for yourself in a way that no one else can is your testament to the level of ownership and responsibility you are taking and are prepared to take in your life. And this is leadership. So I'm fiercely protective over my time, how I spend it, with who it's with. And I'm also fiercely protective over the happiness and peace in my home and with my family. And so I don't say yes to a lot of travel for that reason. I don't say yes to busy weeks with the kids. Uh, I know I've experienced deeply the value of um, just keeping things simple and being home more, being around the table more. Um, so it has to be a pretty big deal to change that up for me. Boundaries are everything. They are, they really are, they, they are so important. Um, and this is not about, I mean, okay, what comes up for people when they think about having boundaries, when they think about saying no in situations or to people? is that worry, that fear of what will people think? And the thing you need to understand, we, we live in a great time. It's gonna keep changing for the better, but we, we live in a good time where you, you can actually right now, whether it's me or someone else, you can think of somebody who models this well, boldly, does not care what people think, because those are, those are the wrong people to care about their opinion of, okay? Uh, when you're worried about what people are gonna think, when you set up boundaries, mm-mm. Worry, worry about what's going to happen in your own life if you keep going the way that you are without the right boundaries in place. So be fiercely protective of your time, who you're spending it with, and what you stand for and what you don't. There are people that are going to leave your life. They're going to leave your life path as you keep growing. It is all by design. I have There have been many for me, and you have to be very okay with that. If, if you are somebody committed to doing your best work and to making your life, you know, your masterpiece and and just showing up because as you do that, you make people feel uncomfortable and they were there for a season of your life, but you're not there anymore. Um, there's a Rumi saying, Rumi is quoted as saying, yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world, but today I'm wise, so I'm changing myself. And this really starts with protecting your time and having those very safe and loving boundaries in place so that you can show up as the person you're meant to be here to be. So a great place to start in this area is to say no more often to the th and just start in small ways. Um, an action I wanna give you within this topic is to create a short message, something you're going to copy and paste to people when you're presented with a request. I want you to look at where, how you can say no to more things, more obligations that aren't serving you anymore, 
um, or people that are just not aligned anymore with, with your, you know, purpose in life and the work you want you're here to do, come up with a message. I mean, here, here's a simple one I wrote out. I'll share with you guys. This is one that I commonly respond to requests with. Hey, thanks for thinking of me. I have a full calendar this year, and in order to stay loyal to my current commitments, I will need to decline this request. Perhaps there will be an opportunity for us to collaborate in the future. Like almost every day, that reply goes out. So now what happens is as you start to do this, um, there are there are people that you all have in your life who are used to taking from you. So those people will leave the building. They'll evacuate your life <laughs> as you start to do this more. And you'll attract more people who really get this. And so, you you know, the demand on your time will change. But um, that that's an action I want to give you within this. This is very important. And this will keep happening as you grow. You will you will you will absolutely have to say no to more things because you you will need to have more of an impact with your time and to serve more people in less time. Ooh, last Gwen said, uh, doesn't the last Star Wars movie suggest that once you rise up to the light, you will meet the equal darkness? Uh, yeah, but you'll be ready for it. You're equipped. I, I do, I face that quite often. I'm just reading through your comments. Uh, Kristen said, fear, hi Kristen, fear of me also, fear for me also makes me not stand in my boundaries. What if I let go of that and no one steps in and takes ownership? You know what? That's not your responsibility. So when you take ownership for your life, you will attract people over the next couple of years that are also very willing and excited to do that. There will be some, some, you know, shuffling that will happen as you, it'll make people uncomfortable. Absolutely. But have a greater fear in your in your own life of, of, like I said, you know, my greatest fear would be to live lukewarm. And lukewarm for me would be defined as living by other people's expectations. Blech. Boring. Makes me want to barf. Um, <laughs> that If that is a, a mutual fear for you, then you just keep rocking, you know, your alignment and, and have those boundaries in place to protect that. So I'm going to end this Steve Jobs style and just share one more thing. <laughs> I created over on my coaching tools page. I uploaded it this morning for you guys. It's a checklist I give my team when they're ready to rise up, when they're ready to, to hit that next rank in their business. It's a great little checklist. Um, when, you know, these five things I talked about today, this is the meat of rising up. This is what is absolutely necessary, non-negotiable, you know, I am with great reflection and clarity. I share this because what I'm seeing happen is so much, so much success and abundance that comes from the root of these five things. When you have these five things in check, you're ready. You're ready to rank up. You're ready to, to up level, upgrade. Um, and so if you're in a doTERRA business, I'm, I've given you that checklist over, over coaching tool section is towards the bottom. So before I close out, I want to read your comments and just hear how this landed for you. You know, what of those five things, you know, what was like the megaphone to your heart? Alina said, I'm so, so grateful you spend this time with us every week. This is, it matters to me. It, it really is meaningful to me to have you here. And what I experience in my own life and in my business, it, it's so, I mean, I, I love to give back because it's real what's happening. And I love, I love to share what I'm experiencing and what I'm seeing happen in my own life and with other people. Okay, cool. This is the, you guys have some great comments here. Um, Danielle asked, when you when starting out, you have so many classes, how did you balance that feeling like you're not spending that time with family? Do you just bite the bullet and do it so that you can build something wonderful or do you have a better balance idea? No, no. Um, so I've shared this before when I talk about what it really takes. When I first started building my brand, Whole Fit, this was years, you know, five, six years before I started integrating doTERRA and this work. Um, 
lots of 2 a.m. nights, you guys. I was very clear that anything worth having is going to take hard work in the beginning. You've got to get momentum on your side. So get rid of the word balance. You, you will figure out ways. And again, if the, the sooner you can understand these five things I've shared today, um, the more you're actually going to be able to do with less time. So a lot of you, if you're just starting this, there are things that you've committed to in your life that you should not be committing to. So start there. Take a deep scrub of your schedule. Take a look at your commitments and what needs to change so that it actually doesn't feel like all of a sudden you're layering on more things. But, you know, time is a real thing. I mean, if you work full time and you've started building doTERRA and you have the same 24 hours a day, and you're sleeping for eight of them, then you have to get creative. You have to look at where you can ask for help. I did a broadcast. Um, what was the number of it? It's called It Takes a Village to Raise a Vision. Uh, number 10, podcast number 10. Go back and listen to that because I go through the various levels of help you're going to need to uh, ask for as you are adding and growing your business. Um, but really, <laughs> If you were to do, if you were to like really think about these five things I shared today, maybe go back and listen to this once again, once it gets uploaded over on iTunes, if you were to really sit with this and think about some of the changes you want to make in your life, you'd realize you could actually do a lot more than what you think you could. Um, another podcast I'll tee up and just reference was um, podcast number 15, Creating the Beautiful Life Blueprint really helpful for this just getting clear on you know what you want in your life and really owning that and and working towards that awesome uh angie said do you feel like 100 percent success in personal health is necessary before being successful in doTERRA or do you feel that continued growth will show what is needed you're never going to be 100 percent healthy um it's it's having a holistic perspective. Now, I do think movement in one area is movement in all the areas. So, for example, getting out for like a 20-minute walk every day where maybe you're listening to a broadcast, that's a high-impact commitment. That's going to grow. You know, you're, you're circulating blood in your system. You're expanding your lungs. You're, you're expanding your mindset as you move your body. You will absolutely see growth in your business. But no, um, it's not about 100%. It's, it's about your commitment to um, if, if you're somebody who is focused on putting the right foods in your body and moving your body, exercising a little bit every day, for example, um, drinking more water than wine, <laughs> if, you, if you have these kinds of activities throughout your day, you have a success mindset. So it's gonna, it's all, it all works together. So it's not about 100% in one area, um, but I've rarely met a, a truly successful person in business that did not have a high level of health for that reason. Jill, uh, any advice for self-help for fear of public speaking? So, um, I mean, whether this is an essential oil class or speaking on a stage, the best tip I can give you is picture yourself there long before you, you're there. Maybe it's a couple weeks out. Picture yourself there at the front of the room and think about the feeling you want to create in that room. Is it connection? Is it warmth? Is it sisterhood? Um, you know, what? how would you describe what you want to create in that room? And let that guide you. Um, one of the most common ways to just like free yourself of that pressure when you're speaking is to actually share when you get up in front of a room. Share with them that, you know, you're quite nervous and you never really thought you'd be doing this. But your life has changed in a big way because of what you're about to share. And this is your truth. And you're so excited to connect with them tonight and share your heart. When you start from that place, as opposed to showing up, you know, trying to be perfect, the energy shifts and all of a sudden you can sink in and just let your message, let it rip, let your message come from your heart. There's a lot of great tools out there. Yeah. Like Morgan said, um, talk like Ted is a great book for public speaking. So the Ted, Ted talks are uh, the nice thing with those is they have to keep it around 20 minutes. And so their message has to be really concise and have a through line and has to flow. Um, but I, I think the people, people will never remember what you say, bottom line. But they will always remember how they felt in the room as you were speaking. If they could feel your heart. I have sat through 
tons of boring presentations where somebody's got to, I mean, and I've been the one giving those also in the past, right? The most boring presentations are the ones where somebody is standing there reading from the slides or from a script and you don't even feel their heart in their message. It could have been anybody giving the talk. All right, I got to wrap up, you guys. But thank you for joining live. As always, appreciate this time with you. I will not be on next week for your calendars. I'll be in Orlando at doTERRA's Leadership Retreat. I know a lot of you there. I'm excited to have a front row seat as a lot of my girls are speaking for the first time in some of the breakouts. Um, so I know I'll see some of you there. Oh, thank you. Is it Jean, Rebecca Glover? Awesome. All right, so we'll catch you guys in two weeks. See you then.